If you're looking to learn King's Fall in Destiny 2, but you've played King's Fall or played with someone who played King's Fall in Destiny 1, and you don't want to sit through a very long video, this is a video for you. In this video, I'm going to talk about only the changes between Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. That way, if you have experience with the raid, and a lot of you probably do, right? It was a very popular raid in Destiny 1. So if you're returning and just want to learn how to do the new raid and what are the mechanics that have changed, this again is a video for you. So first off, there's the opening sequence. Literally nothing's changed here, so I'm going to skip that real quick. Totems. In totems, things have started to change, and you'll notice some of the mechanics I talk about here you'll use later on. To swap the brands, you need to actually grab a brand reclaimer, which you actually, any of the brands or things you have to pick up in Destiny 2, you actually have to use an action to square on PS5 or PS4 to actually pick things up. But you're going to get a brand claimer from a knight that's on the overhang areas that overlook the encounter. Then you go and you steal the brand from the person guarding the plate. Now again, if you're running out of time, you don't have to do it on the plate. You can actually run and go in the middle. And again, the way you'll know it's exchanged is that the person stealing the brand is going to see that they have it now. And the person who had the brand before does it. And again, if you for some reason don't see that, just wait a second and make sure you steal it properly because you don't want to have someone not have the brand and actually die on the plate protecting the plate. You gain additional Death Singer buffs by killing ads while you have the brand. So that's one why it's important while you have it. You can't just sit there on the plate. You actually need to kill some stuff. There are three Unstoppables that show up, and it's basically at one-third of the total Death Singer. So those you'll need to take out really quickly because they can really mess up the group if you don't do that. For War Priest, again, very similar encounter. To reveal which plate starts the glyph sequence, you actually have the person on the middle plate step on. If you can't see it from the middle plate, that means the middle plate's a starting plate. Otherwise, you'll see rights on left and right, because from middle, you can't see the other side. So you step off the plate, then whoever's supposed to step on first steps on. So let's say it's left. The left person steps on. They will have to look over and see what other plate they see lit on. Same thing. Middle's kind of hard to see, so if you don't see anything, it's probably middle. Otherwise, right is really easy to see, then it's right. And so you do the three. That's the big difference between Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. During the DPS phase in Destiny 1, you would actually shoot ads to extend the DPS phase. In this case, you don't do that. You should have someone go around looking on the other plates for knights that show up. When you get those knights, they will give you a brand stealer just like you did in the previous encounter. You take that, and that's how you extend DPS. And you can do that with two knights, so you can extend it two times. Golgoroth is basically the same encounter except with some small differences. In Destiny 1, if you had people die and you got up to six, right... That's how you would do the wipe mechanic. In Destiny 2, what is instead is if you don't use an orb, that increments that. And if you don't use six orbs over the encounter, then everyone wipes. So it's very important to do the six orb strat and do all the orbs if possible. If you miss one, it's fine. But just keep in mind it's going to increment that counter. The other thing is one of the players can get unstable light just like in Destiny 1. But in this case, if you run towards, the, towards Golgoroth, with that, you will do actual damage to him. So make sure if you have unstable light, you don't just go hide in the back. Go towards Golgoroth, stand next to him when you explode, it'll actually do damage to him. For daughters or sisters, there's a couple of key mechanics that are going to be different between Destiny 1 and Destiny 2, and this is where it's confusing for a lot of people. You will have a knight show up to tell you where to start the sequence. Once you get on the plate, you kill him and get on the plate, you'll then see the next plate. So it's not counterclockwise, it's only two plates. So you'll see the second plate, you'll call that out, that person will stand on that plate, and then you'll actually see the platforms and the person can go through. You'll do the platforms, again, remember the person is torn as random, you'll do the platforms three times. On the third one, on the first two, you just run through to extend it to the next phase. On the third one, you're actually going to have to do an action, pick up the buff, and then dunk it on the daughters. The other thing to keep in mind is you can't jump on the plates before they turn green. If you do, it'll actually turn red and hurt you. So you can't, like in Destiny 1, you can't stand on one of the plates and use it as protection. You only do that once you're ready to do the sequence. And again, the rest of the encounter is pretty similar to Destiny 1. So for Oryx, Oryx again takes some of those same pieces that we saw in Darters and changes them a little bit. So Oryx again will slam one plate just like he did in Destiny 1. He In Destiny 1, he would generally just do it in the front in the beginning. He'll do it with any plate, so just keep that in mind. You will again tell the other person to stand on their plate, and that, that basically takes the platform and extends the platform out. So that the person who's torn. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the person who's torn in this case is random. It is not the same person. And so because of that, you're going to have to use the floaters to cover plates for the purposes 
of ogres and things like that. So what we did is we just had a floater in the front and in front of the back. If one of the person that was torn came from the front or back, that floater would just cover that plate. The other difference from Destiny 1 is for that second sequence, Oryx is not going to move. So to know which plate is next, you just need to wait and see which plate turns green. So whichever one that was, that person jumps on. The person who's the person who's going to be doing the torn jumps on as well. And then you're able to tell the other person which plate they need to jump on to complete the sequence. So again, do that a total of three times. On the third time, you're going to get the buff that's going to allow you to take out the shielded knight in the middle. Once this is done, you actually don't need to open up his chest by shooting him. What you do instead is you have the person stay in the middle, just like in Destiny 1. You have everyone go detonate their bombs. Detonate the bombs will do some damage, but it'll also open up his chest. Once you open up his chest, that's when you actually go in and do DPS. So again, the bombs are not the primary mode of doing DPS in Destiny 2. The primary mode of doing DPS is doing DPS. So you'll want to use weapons accordingly to do that. You'll notice he has a rather chunky last stand bar, and that's exactly what it is. So just like in any other raid you have, you have an enrage mechanic. You can go total four DPS phases with Oryx before you wipe. So one thing, if you still have a phase extra, since he has such a chunky bar, if you have enough heavy and enough supers to take him out, that's great. Just keep going. If you don't, you might want to chip him towards the end. Just get him right above that bar and then stop. That's what we did when we did our first clear. And obviously, as better DPS strategies develop, that may not be needed in the future. But once he gets that last stand, he's going to go to the front. You're going to see two of the ogres show up with bombs. Those bombs are when he starts his wipe mechanic, how you're going to be able to stun him to be able to do DPS. Now, one of the things we discovered is you can detonate one bomb, do DPS, and then detonate the other if you want to. So if you're concerned about doing enough DPS, instead of detonating them both at the same time, you can take time to detonate one, do DPS, then detonate the other and do DPS. Once you're done with that, just like Destiny 1, he's dead, you finished the raid. So again, that's the video guys. I hope you really appreciate it. I just thought it might be good for people who are Destiny 1 vets, people who've been in raids, who don't necessarily have to watch the entire thing to understand mechanics, but really want to understand what has changed because there are a significant number of changes in this raid compared to when Vault of Glass went live. So I hope this video was useful for it is. If it is, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.